Imagine this, you grinded six months on lead code, but you got rejected in the hiring manager round. Or you aced those DP problems perfectly, but you were rejected in the machine coding round because your code was not perfect. I have seen a lot of brilliant students to actually miss on opportunities, not because they were out of luck or because they had no talent. It was surely because they did not prepare for the right exam. Today, I will try to break down different kind of interview rounds that you'll be facing. DSA, Quant, Project Breakdown, Machine Coding, LLD, HLD, Hiring Manager, HR, and the new AI Engineer round. I'll show you the patterns, the traps, and the exact way that you need to prepare for these kind of interviews so that it's not your luck, but your skill that decides your future. Hi, I'm Vivek. I'm a former ICPC world finalist, an ex-engineer at Google, and currently founder of AlgoZenith. Over the years, I have interviewed candidates for multiple different roles, and I have coached a lot of candidates as well for cracking these interviews. The common theme that I've seen is that often great engineers miss out on opportunities because they don't understand what the round is testing them on. In this video, I'll bring the full landscape of how interviews are happening, what the different types, and what you need to prepare for them. I'll talk about the typical format, as well as the red flags that the interviewers look for. So stay till the end. So let's first build a map. There are five essential categories. Number one, problem solving and fundamentals. So DSA and quant would come in this particular category. Number two, engineering ability and coding ability to some degree. And machine coding, LLD, systems coding also comes under this same round. Third, the theme is around architecture and trade-offs and generally HLD is the type of interviews that test this. Fourth, ownership and fit. Generally, the hiring manager round and HR rounds test you on this. Also, the project breakdown, the project discussion that happens in interviews also test you for this particular thing. Fifth is domain depth. I think it can be specific to the role that you're applying to. For an example, if you're applying for AI engineer, you'd be tested on the role specific things in that. Let's start with the round discussions and how you can prepare for them. Number one, DSA round. What are DSA rounds? They essentially try to test you on multiple things like problem solving, data structure knowledge, clarity of thinking, and communication under time pressure. Generally, when you have a DSA round, you will have 45 to 60 minutes of an interview and you'd be given an ID and the interviewer will come, get on a short introduction, ask you few questions, one or two in most cases. Sometimes it goes to three depending on the difficulty of the question and you're supposed to solve them in that time limit. How to answer these kind of interviews? Generally, you start with a brute force solution and you try to optimize this further. You ask for constraints for different kind of restrictions that might be there in the input. You need to talk about the time complexity, space complexity before you jump onto the solution and make sure that the interviewer is happy with your solution. Some of the red flags that I see in candidates is basically being silent, not explaining things, jumping to the code directly, things like this, right? All the top companies like Google, Microsoft, Apple, Meta, whatever company you think of in the top categories, ask a DSA round for sure. Next are quant interviews. They mostly ask you about puzzles, probabilities, and estimation problems. They are asked by mostly trading companies, some infra teams of very high scale distributed systems, and some product based companies as well. They try to test you on your math skills, statistics skills, how are you able to rationale and proof certain things, estimation, mental math, and if you can be calm under pressure, right? These are mostly rapid fires, or sometimes you are given just a pen and paper and you have to scribble through the questions that are given to you. Prefer structure over speed in these kind of rounds. They are short and you're expected to answer quickly. So be fast in your answer, but don't miss out on explaining why you are thinking the way you are thinking. I think classic probability puzzles that you see on different sites, puzzled quant is one site which has a lot of these questions where you can practice them are a good places to practice for these kind of rounds. I think all top companies like Jane Street, IHC, Optiver, you can think of Indian companies like Rexquant, Graviton, Tower Research, all these, when they are hiring for quant researcher, they will ask these kind of rounds. The third type of round are project teardowns. Now they generally test you on the ownership of the project that you have built, if you have actually built them or just used AI. They try to test your knowledge or depth of things that you have written in the resume and what kind of trade-offs, what kind of engineer are you actually? It's generally 30 to 35 minutes discussion. I have seen some interviews of project discussion spanning across whole 60 minutes as well, but generally it takes around 30 minutes of time. So for these kind of rounds, for every project or internship that you have written, I recommend students to prepare for SODA, S-O-D-A. 
prepare for the scope what was the problem who used it what was the success metric that you were trying to build then o options what were the different alternatives that you faced while you were building the project and what did you choose decisions if you chose x over y why was that why was it was it for some sort of latency cost complexity what was the thing that drove your decisions your reasoning behind the decision and a aftermath now that you have built this project what has broken what did not work how would you want to change certain things if you had to implement few more things what would you do so this soda will help you to prepare for most of the points that you have written in your resume prepare the SODA for every project and you would be generally okay with answering questions. Of course, you should have built those projects to be very clear and actually be able to answer questions. I have sometimes seen some startups to actually ask you to open the project and make life changes in front of them. So be prepared and make sure that you're not copying these projects. I think a lot of big companies also ask apart from startups this particular round like Stripe, Uber, Atlassian and all. What generally kills you in these kind of rounds is things like we did it in a team where you did not had any contribution or you have very vague understanding of how things work and the numbers that you have written in the resume makes no sense like the impact numbers that you have written. These are things that might be a red flag in a candidate. The fourth one is machine coding or systems coding round. It is aka the build something round, right? Basically they try to test you if you are given a requirement whether you are able to translate that into working piece of code with good class structure, APIs, error handling and everything in the place, right? It's generally like 60 to 120 minutes of interview, like one to two hours. And you are tested on interview questions like design a parking lot, design a rate limiter, design a certain cash system for yours, like for some piece and you are given the requirements and then you have to make sure that the code gives those APIs that are requested in the requirement. Generally in this particular round, you are supposed to clarify the requirements that are given, understand where it will be used. You have to list down the assumptions that you might be required to handle in this particular code, design the data models and the interfaces that you would be implementing, try to write down the core flow first, try to write down what might change here and there, then try to write the extra pieces of functions. It might be dependent on it. Try to write down tests if the company expects you to do that. Try to keep the code modular, try to log events that might be necessary and make sure that they follow the best practices of the language. Generally, the red flags are very bad naming of variables, spaghetti codes, right? There is no test, no like modularity, no solid principles being followed in writing the code. If you are having these things in the code that you are writing, probably you will get rejected in these rounds. In Stripe, you have bug squash round. In Uber, you have this real world problem coding round. Flipkart, PhonePay, Swiggy, Paytm, Zomato. Many companies are adopting this particular round these days and you should be prepared to answer these kind of questions. If you have watched till this point, I hope you are enjoying the series. We will keep creating more such content, so definitely subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you are notified whenever a new video comes. Next, the fifth point, LLD rounds. Now it's a little similar to the previous round but it's I would say a little different. It's more on the design side rather than implementation. So it's object oriented designing, modeling of the world problem that is given to you, keeping extendability and things in place. You are generally asked to design a certain APIs or certain requirements a certain parts of a class maybe for a particular feature, let's say, right? In this case, you're not expected to write the codes right away. You have to draw the requirements, draw the class diagrams, draw the dependency of the objects that you will be building, try to think about the design principles that you would be using in the code, making sure that concurrency and things are at right places. Solid principles are perfect in the code. All these things are what is checked. Creating only one class to solve the whole problem leaking internal classes, not being knowledgeable about the concurrency things that might be there, not using proper design patterns can get you rejected in these rounds. I think Amazon also has this very famous uh, object oriented design round that they ask from SD2 onwards, which is a good example of this. I think many companies have this. Machine coding and LLD rounds are almost similar, but still the focus is more on design than on coding. The sixth type of round that you'll be facing is HLD rounds, which is high level design round. It tries to test your architectural design thinking and trade-offs that you take, right? So for an example, you must have heard problems like design a URL shortener, de design a chat system, design an Instagram feed and things like that, right? So there is a very standard flow that you, that you follow in these kind of interviews that you try to first think about the QPS for the functional and the non-functional requirements that are there in the question. Then you try to draw down the core APIs or the core components that you are going to be building in this particular 
design then you think about the data how will you model what kind of databases you will use then you will try to build the blocks connect them together try to think of what if something goes wrong what if more pressure comes the interview generally goes into discussions around retries replication uh, what if this happens what if that happens how will this handle and so on it also sometimes goes into observability how will the logging happen how will the metrics be checked and things like that buzzwords without numbers ignoring bottlenecks having bad designs can get you rejected in these rounds and this is asked almost in every mid level to senior level engineering interviews these days google meta microsoft all big companies i think have a system design round from sd to or from three onwards definitely the seventh is the hiring manager round where you are tested by the manager of the team whether you will be a good fit for the team and you will be good fit for the project as well so they will ask you about your past what kind of conflicts you had faced what kind of situations you have faced before and there is a standard framework star that you use to answer most of these questions right so star situation task that you were given action that you took and what did it result in so in this round you're generally supposed to not blame others in different teams you are supposed to be clear on the outcomes that you brought in the teams that you had worked earlier you are supposed to show a little curiosity in the work that you'll be given once you join in the team i think very good examples of this would be like leadership round that happens in amazon every company google has googleiness rounds and stuff like that right this is very close to the next type of round the eighth type which is hr rounds in which you are also asked very similar questions but generally it's around the company's culture your ad around communication motivation whether you'll be staying in the company or not whether you have the alignment with the company or not and this is generally taken by the hr who might not have the tech knowledge or might not have the idea about what the work you are going to be doing but instead they are more inclined towards working towards the best offer that they can get for the company right so they will try to see if you are a good fit for the company so try to know the why why you are joining this team what is the learning that you are looking for how will you grow where do you see yourself in 5 years things like that right so if you are like too much talking about perks if you are talking too much about like blaming others in different teams if you are inconsistent about what is written in your resume and what you are saying then you might get rejected and hr round happens in every company in fact i feel these days The ninth and the final type of interview that I expect mo- any of you to give in 2025 and onwards is the AI software engineer interview. I think it's a full stack MLA in- engineering interview that many students would be giving for different companies where you are expected to know maths, modeling, experimentation and mostly productionizing ml models so you should know little bit about python coding in that managing data you should know about ml theory like bayes variance how does ml model work what are the different trade offs that you need to take in different cases you need to know about different ml system designs like offline versus online features feature store how do you build that training and serving skew between models ab testing and observability of models then you are supposed to also know about llm and gen ai things that are coming up these days so tokenization prompting rag agents latency costs trade offs that you need to do in these things sometimes even about safeties and guardrails that you have to put for the system in this you are supposed to generally show metrics that you have driven in your previous works like what auc improvement that you have brought that your auc change in the model brought this much click through rate in certain product of the company you have to discuss about different experiments you have taken what was the design what was the system what was the error analysis that you might have done in that you need to show systems thinking that how do you build pipelines of ml i think this comes a little bit in ml ops as well if you have only theory and hacks but don't know any practical application of things i don't think you will get selected in these rounds these days example if you go to top cutting edge ai companies like open ai google deep mind all these companies probably you'd have this round these days so now you know the landscape dsa for problem solving quant for reasoning project tear down for ownership machine coding for engineering craft lld and hld for system design hiring manager and hr round for fit into the company and the team and ai interviews for end to end ml thinking these are the different things that are happening in the landscape prepare for the round that you are facing don't prepare for a generic view of an interview if you want me to convert this video into a printable checklist let me know in the comments and i'll make that if you are serious about improving your problem solving skills and be pre- better prepared for interviews subscribe to the channel and i'll keep creating more such content if you want a structured prep for all these kind of rounds at a junior and a senior level as well check out algo zenith It's one stop solution for all your prep needs. I teach DSA and CP there and I can testify for the quality that they have. Remember consistency beats hard work. That's all for this one. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.